Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are nearing a milestone. In the next episode, we're going to be at episode number 1230, and that's a small milestone right there. But it finds us in this series where we're talking about how we can be able to benefit when we do our work pro bono, our purpose. We deploy our purpose pro bono. What are some of the benefits? Of course, when you're going to do pro bono, there are some things that you're foregoing. You're foregoing being paid your professional fees. You're not going to be paid when you're doing your pro bono work. But we're looking at the salient advantages, just not for you, but even for society, that come up when you do your work pro bono. Some people do not do pro bono work because all they're looking at is, where is my money? What's in it for me? We FM. What's in it for me? If there is nothing in it for them, they say, I don't do charity. And they walk away not knowing that just one simple act of deploying your purpose, your God-given purpose for free, professionally, at a professional standard, has very many benefits that can be able to accrue. And I'm just mentioning a few in this series. So let us look at one more. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Life Signatures episodes are brought to you by AfricanBooks.com, which is an online ebook platform that seeks to broadcast the African Christian voice to the world. As such, they have become a hub for African content, connecting African writers and publishers with a global reading audience. Publishing your books on their site is free and easy, with authors having full control over their content and the price they choose to sell at it. I was personally blown away by the concept that AfricanBooks.com is coming up with. Things like... No content from their site or their app is going to be run on laptops so that people can easily copy. In other words, your content as a writer is restricted from digital multiplication or digital copying. So you remain intact with your information. And that concept that I got so blown away with was the fact that in some time to come, in due course, AfricanBooks.com will be starting to announce African Writer of the Year. In other words, there will be competitions in all African countries to figure out who is the best published author. And I also fell in love with the fact that countries can actually compete against each other. We can have African authors going at it after each other. And your book as an author will be reviewed and have some stars and recommended upon that particular platform. The thing is that it's an answer to Amazon.com. You know, with Amazon, what happens? You've got to have an account in the Americas or whatever, or in Europe before you can get paid as an author. But here, the local currency is in play and the local means of getting paid are in place. So to get started, go to AfricanBooks.com as an author or as a publisher and even as a reader if you wanted to read your African favorite authors. Enjoy.
Yesterday I wondered what the world would be if all of us would do our work pro bono at some point in time. If all of us would deploy our work in a professional way pro bono at some point in time. And actually in a much, much, much previous episode in the same series, I say that sometimes when you mention the word pro bono, the thing that comes to the minds of people is lawyers. We think that lawyers are the only ones who do the work pro bono. Of course, probably it's a profession that is instituted has instituted that idea of life and uh, they have run with it in a in a in a good way but we are saying that there is a possibility and there is an opportunity for the rest of us to jump onto that bandwagon and we're looking at some of the advantages that are accruing when you do your work pro bono i'm going to run through them just two that have been mentioned so far number 1 it helps you to refine your gift you as a person who's doing your work pro bono at full throttle professionally highly professional you're doing it not just because you you are you're passing fulfilling all righteousness but you're pouring out your blood sweat and tears your professionalism you're doing it as if you're gonna be paid for it guess what it refines your gift it refines your craft that's one advantage number two it helps in the greater good for humanity that means that you, whatever you do pro bono is needed in society someone is in need of your professional help and probably they are not in a position to pay for it so what do you do you come along side and help them lift them up and when you do lift them up we say that they get into another level in their lives that they're going to be productive and even empowered to help other people in and of themselves in fact let us look at number three today it institutes a wonderful culture of giving when you do your work pro bono let me tell you it institutes a culture of giving i have been in situations in my life several times where someone has had mercy on me someone has helped me as in i am absolutely totally down i'm gonna give you one incidence in one incidence there's this friend of mine i call him friend and it's 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 weird but i'm gonna say it and i've said it in very many episodes in this uh in this series in this podcast there was a point in my life where I lost my job and therefore I did not have an avenue of income and I was really, really, really suffering before I started being a full-time coach and uh, a writer and so on and a content creator in terms of purpose, productivity and resilience and I was, my back was against the wall. I was in the worst situation ever. I was in dire straits and so this man will come home occasionally probably if uh, he will do that every month i mean every week or something like that he will pick me and uh, take me with his car to the nearest supermarket and he will get the biggest trolley that this supermarket ever had and we'll start walking the aisles of that supermarket and i pick whatever i needed anything i wanted and he will pay at the end of the day, he will go into his wallet and just pay. And he will say, sometimes when I was driving, uh, when we were with him and he's driving, and we're going for meetings and so on, he will tell me, Lawrence, let me prophesy. There's going to come a day in your life that you're, you're going to buy someone a car. <sighs> and I was looking at that guy and I was like, <laughs> What are you talking about, man? I cannot pay for my I cannot pay for a sausage. I don't have money even to pay for a sausage. And he's saying I'm gonna buy somebody a car. Yeah, it's it's it was like I think let me see, seven, nine years ago, ten, whatever it is, he will say these mighty things. But what I'm saying is that this man will actually go out of his way and help me. But that is not necessarily uh, pro bono. He was not doing his work pro bono. He, he was just helping. I, I, I'm saying, telling you that story to derive a point that that act, that service that he did to me, that help that he did to me, injected the same vaccine inside of me or the same virus, if you will, inside of me so much so that I identify with people in my situation that uh, these people who are in the situation I was in years uh, uh, ago and I'm able to help them. 
That's the exact same thing that is going to happen when you do your work pro bono. When you're doing your work pro bono and you're doing it with the utmost finesse, giving your blood, your sweat, your tears, giving your all in it, what happens when you're doing your work pro bono? It speaks to the person who is the recipient of your professional work for free, your professional purpose for free. It speaks to them. It doesn't end with them. And what is doing in their psyche and in their mind, in their spirit, it is telling them one day. One day I'm going to be in a position to help someone and I swear I am going to help him. That's what our pro bono work does. It institutes a wonderful culture of giving. Did you notice how you swore that day when you were helped? That day when, you know, you swore that when I come to my glory, that day when you were down and you were out and someone came and helped pay your rent someone came and did this and did that and you swore the only way i am going to give and pay back is if i find someone else in the same condition or someone else that is needing to be bailed and i'm gonna come alongside and help them did you notice how grateful your heart was when a stranger came through for you that is exactly what you will be doing to someone in need when you come through for them you will be doing this to them you'll be instituting injecting them with the spirit of giving in turn they will identify someone else in their vicinity one year two years ten years it could be even 20 years from now like now i was housed uh, several years ago when i was stuck A family took me in and they gave me housing as I was going to college. I still remember them and I still scheme around how I'm going to repay them. I know this man retired and he went into the village and every time I'm thinking about him, I'm scheming of one day driving to his home in the village with a package. But my point is, every time you are doing your work pro bono, Don't ever count it as if it's just something that you're doing and it ends with you. You are, without knowing, instituting a spiritual thing and you're in turn giving out a culture. This culture of giving, this culture of compassion, this culture culture of care, this culture starts spreading across the earth. With every person that you touch, you don't leave them the same. Let me tell you, you can find the most hardened soul in this world ever. But there is no hardened soul that is never softened by an act of genuine compassion, genuine kindness, and genuine care, especially where it hurts them the most. When it comes full circle, at some point in time you are the one who is going to be the recipient of that benefit because you gave the principle in life is give us gain well tomorrow what are we gonna do when i come to a close of this series we've been talking about pro bono services but until then bye bye Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.